your turn. Give an example of a unary relationship. One was employee and manager. Any other examples where there are relationships among entity types? Just the meaning among the same entity type instances are connected. That's right. Parents and children are people who are connected by uh, relationship. So that's a unit. Marriage is another example. You know, people are involved in the relationship of marriage. Uh, so let's, should we try parent and children? Let's try to draw the diagram. It's a little tricky. It's illustrative also. <coughs> okay, so parent and children, let's, that's a unary relationship connecting instances of uh, persons, right? So I'm going to say a uh, person is the entity type. Okay. And for now, let's just talk about the relationship of you know, one of the parentage, let's say mother of, right? One person is the mother of another person, right? Because father of would be another relationship, right? Because every person has two parents. So we'll talk about one of these relationships, okay? So there's clearly a relationship between a person being a mother of another person, and of course the other person being the child of this person, that, that relationship would be the same on either side. So uh, every person is the mother of zero, zero or more persons, right? So clearly that would start off with a dashed line here. And there's a crow foot on the other side because you could be the mother of, uh, one could be the mother of many persons, right? Could you do it the other way if you wanted? Does it have to, like, could the dashed line be on top and the crow foot on the bottom? Oh yeah, of course, of course, it could be. It just depends, you know, the role, which role is being played. No problem at all. Okay, now what about the line on this side? A person, okay, so here I'm saying mother of, that's this relationship, right? One person may be the mother of many persons. And one person may be the child of, right, child of one and only one mother. So that's, and here we are talking, of course, biological and all that stuff. You know, once you bring in adoption and things, the, the diagram becomes different. So here we are talking about biological motherhood and biological childhood. Okay, that's what we are talking about here. Right? So that's a solid line, child of uh, one and only one person and mother of zero or more children. Zero or more persons. Okay? So that's a unary relationship just like this. And his question was, you know, could it be that I draw the diagram, the line in a different way in the sense that the growth would come here? No problem. Except that then the relationship names would change and the dashed line would also be in the other side. Other than that, there's no issue. Okay? So that's one example. Marriage is another example. Right? Spouse of or you know, husband of, wife of relationship. Again, it's between persons. Okay. Now in the course, as you go forward, you'll see actually many examples of unary. It might you might think that it, these are you know very rare kind of situations. They're not. It it does occur quite often. So that's unary relationships. So in general, there's the term called arity of a relationship. Right? Unary, binary, so they call it the arity of a relationship. Right? So you could have unary relationship in which there's only one entity type and some instances are connected to other instances. Just like some employees were managers of other employees, or some persons were children or mothers of other persons, that's binary, in which you have two entity types, and instances of one are related to instances of the other. And then you may have ternary relationships. We'll shortly see an example of ternary relationship, in which case there are really three entity types. And a relationship connects all three of them simultaneously. Whereas in the earlier case, it only connected two or one entity type. In this case, there are three entity types and all of them together are involved in a relationship. Okay. We'll see an example of that and then of course, this could go on. It could be an n-ary relationship where n entity types are involved in a relationship. Okay. 
Let's see an example of a ternary relationship. Now, the, the very first diagram that we saw, the very first set of tables I showed you was an ex example of a ternary relationship, right? Because it said <coughs> a shipment, which was the fourth table that we saw, is of a product by a supplier to a project. Right? So shipment is the connection between a product, supplier, and project. Meaning you're saying supplier S1 supplied product P1 to project J1 and 200 units were supplied. So that statement involves all three entity, entity types within the same breadth. You can't just say, isn't it the same as saying a supplier supplies a part and a supplier supplies to a project and a part is supplied to a project? No. It's more than just those three binary relationship, relationships. Right? It's all of them coming together and that's what an instance is. Right? If you try to break it up into those three pieces, you lose information. You will not be able to find out that this supplier supplied this product to this project. You, you lose that information. You will only know this supplier supplied this product may have supplied to many projects. This supplier supplied to this project may have supplied any product. And this product was supplied to this project could be by any supplier. You don't know that. If you break it up into three, you're losing information. So this relationship necessarily involves all three entity types simultaneously. That's an example of a ternary relationship. Okay. Any other example? ternary relationship where a statement actually has to involve all three of them simultaneously? With a teacher, excellent. Right, a student takes a particular course with a particular teacher. It's different from saying the student is taking the course. Right, that, that's, you don't know with which teacher. Right, and the student is taking the course with a particular teacher. Right, so it's got to involve all th three of them. That's a good example. Any other? Could that be separated out and say this vehicle has this type of engine and this type of transmission? Because you're talking about a particular vehicle. Looks like that can be parceled out. Anyway, we'll, we'll come across many of these. Okay. Or the fact that uh, uh, you know, I am teaching in this room and using this projector. Right. If you just say I'm using this projector, right? of course the projector happens to be in this room. I can't use this projector in, in, in any other room. But suppose this were mobile and I was carrying it. Right? The fact that I'm teaching a class in this room and using this projector makes it a ternary sort of relationship. We'll see many examples. Okay, So that was a ternary relationship. But now we want to talk about how do you deal with, in general, many to many relationships. Right? I know you guys have dealt with it in the in the previous course, right? You know how to do deal with this. How do you do this? When you have a many to many relationship, what do you typically do? You create a new table, right? So that's really what I'm going to describe now. Why you create a new table and how do you go about it? Right? So you know how to do this. So it's a review for those who have done Enterprise One and it's a new concept for the others. Okay. So we are saying here uh, Okay, a warehouse, you know, there's a relationship between warehouses and products in general, right? We are saying every warehouse may have one or more products stored in it, right? And by product here, we are referring to, uh, you know, not a specific piece of an item. It's like a category that we are referring to, right? So we are saying computer may be a product, keyboard may be a product, okay, in general. We are not identifying every single piece, and of course, we have more to talk about that. So we are saying a warehouse may have zero or more products stored in it, and each product may be stored in zero or more warehouses. That's what the diagram is talking. It's a many-to-many -many relationship. And examples of the relationship are all here. Warehouse 1 has 200 keyboards and 300 monitors. Warehouse 2 has 300 motherboards and 100 keyboards, and warehouse 3 is empty. And similarly, uh, the router product is not also stored anywhere. So here we are talking about a product being stored in a warehouse 
and we are talking about the quantity of that occurrence of the product being stored in the warehouse. Right? So now we know that attributes belong to entity types. So the question we ask is the quantity of a product which is like 200, 300, 100, etc., zero that we are seeing here. The quantity of a product is an attribute of which entity type? For example, yeah, go ahead. It's an attribute of both. That would be the correct answer, right? So in other words, warehouse ID is clearly an attribute of only warehouse. Warehouse name is an attribute of warehouse alone. Similarly, product name or product price or product weight, product color, all of these are just attributes of product. Right? But when you talk about quantity, as Timothy said, Quantity is really describing not any one of them separately, right? Because when you say 200 keyboards, warehouse one has 200 keyboards, right? The 200 is not an attribute of keyboards, right? Because there may be 500 keyboards somewhere else. The 200 is an attribute of keyboard and warehouse, right? It's an attribute of warehouse one and keyboard. Together, the value is 200, right? So to make it more explicit, uh, this is what we are talking about. Uh, you know, the 200 is not really an attribute of warehouse because a warehouse has many products, right? 200 keyboards, 300 monitors, etc., etc. So the 200 is not really an attribute of warehouse, and it's of course also not an attribute of product because the same product is stored in many different places, and and at every place it's stored, the attribute value is different, right? So the situation really is this: that we are saying warehouse, keyboard. 200 is on the line, right? 200 is really uh, warehouse one has 200 keyboards and so on. So the attribute in this case is really falling on the line. And another way of putting it is like Timothy said, it's really an attribute of both. Right? Or to put it differently, it is really an attribute of the relationship. It's not an attribute of any of the shown entities so far. It's really an attribute of the relationship itself, not of either entity. Okay, So that typically happens when you have a many-to-many -many relationship. Most of the time when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, you'll have some attributes which are really attributes of the relationship and not of any of the connected entities. Okay, So quantity is really an attribute of the relationship and not of either entity type. Right? So again, here the, the diagram of the dog may be intriguing. What I'm saying is, it's a relationship, but it has an attribute. You know, it looks like it's a relationship trying to behave like an entity because it has an attribute now. Right? So it barks like a dog, it must be a dog. You know, that's the extended uh, logic for the dog being there. Ignore it. Uh, the puppy being there. You can ignore that. Okay? So the point is that it's a relationship. It has an attribute. Well. It's trying to act like an entity, so let's make it an entity. That's what we are doing here. Okay, we say, well, it has an attribute now. It's you know, it's outgrown uh, just being a relationship. So let's make it a full-fledged entity. Okay. So the the technical term for this is called reification. It's a stylish term. You can try to use it in many other places. Reification means what? To make something real. That's what reification, meaning it's just conceptual, but we are giving it, we are making it into a reality. So, you know, in, in technical terminology, they call it reification. You want to surprise an interviewer, once in a while you might throw this term, even if it's not relevant. You know, he'll try to say, yeah, yeah, he'll try to act cool as if he knows it, he may not know it. So, reification is a cool term that you can throw. Okay. Uh, so, here, so we take this many to many relationship. And we say, well, we're going to convert the relationship into an entity of its own. Okay. Now, really speaking, when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, you want to try and give it a meaningful name. Right? In the last course, I think the name you simply chose was the combination of both of those names, right? So in the last course, you might have said this is warehouse product. Okay. I would say use that as a last resort. If you can find a good name that indicates what that relationship is really about, try to use that name. Okay. The 
A plus B name is really a last minute, uh, you know, last resort cop out. I can't think of anything. I don't know what the hell this means. I'm just going to call it warehouse product. Okay. Try to find a, because it means something. In the real world, the two things are related not just for the heck of it. They are related for a business purpose. Find that name and give it. Okay. So here, clearly, that indicates stock. Right? There are 200 keyboards in warehouse one. Well, that's a stock of keyboards. So I want to call it stock. Okay. Now, by the way, you might have noticed that entities are all named with nouns. Right? Entities are not verbs. Entities are always named with nouns. Okay. So try to follow that also. Right? So stock, and obviously the attribute quantity is now an attribute of this entity type. And of course, now the relationships have changed. The relationship cardinalities have changed. Right? So you can see here, can somebody explain why the relationship cardinalities look the way they do? Now remember, let's, let's understand this. Let's go back to the previous diagram. That will help. Look at this diagram. How many instances of warehouse are there? Three. There are three instances of warehouse, three warehouses. Similarly, there are four instances of product. Okay. Now, each line represents what? An instance of stock, stock, relationship, the name we, name we, so each line represents an instance of stock, right? So how many stocks do we have? Four. There are four lines. So there are four instances of stock that are existing, right? So now, a warehouse has how many stocks? A warehouse can have at least how many stocks? Zero. A warehouse might be empty, right? This warehouse is empty. A warehouse may have zero stocks, and at most, how many stocks? Many, because there are many lines emanating from warehouse, right? And each line is a stock. So a warehouse can have zero stocks or it can have many stocks. And similarly, a product may have zero stocks, a router, there's no stock, and a product may have many stocks, right? So both warehouse and product have a one-to-many relationship with stock. That's exactly what is shown here, right? A warehouse may have zero stocks or many stocks, a product may have zero stocks or many stocks, right? That is why this is dashed because on either side it is zero, right? The original has got dashed lines on both sides, so these lines are dashed. And crowfoot on this side because, you know, it's it's a many-to-many -many relationship. So both of these you know, crowfoot have sort of, you know, inverted themselves into stock. Okay. And why is why are these two lines? Solid? Lines emanating from stock, why are they solid? Because zero, it won't exist. And if you look at this, every stock has to be of some product and it has to be in some warehouse. You can't say, I've got this stock, I don't know what product it is, I don't know what warehouse it is, then it's not a stock, which is sort of what you're saying. Right? Because every stock must be of some product and must be in some warehouse. Okay, so that is why both of those lines are solid. Okay, you'll always see in a many-to-many -many relationship when we create this new entity, when we apply the principle of reification and create a new entity, right, you'll always see that the lines going out from the new entity are always solid. Right? And the cardinality on the new entity is always many. Okay, that, that's just the rule. Now, these two lines may be solid or maybe that depending upon what the original thing is. Okay. Now, the point is that in our diagrams, whenever we have a many-to-many -many relationship, we will always convert it into this. We will always add a new entity type and convert it with the result that in the book, you will not see any many-to-many -many relationships at all. They have all been converted. Okay, so you will not see many to many relationships at all. They will all be one to many relationships or uh, that is it. They are all one to many relationships. You won't even see a one to one relationship. It could be but for whatever reason it does not exist in the book.
So that's what this is. And there's a technical name for this kind of entity. I don't know if you use the name. Have you heard the name associative entity? Okay, that's just the term. It's called an associative entity because it's really an association or a relationship that has been converted into an entity. It's just terminology. It's called an associative entity. Now, some diagramming notations actually use a different notation for an associative entity. They put a small diamond inside it. Right? But it's, it's just additional clutter. You know, if you look at a diagram, you know what was an associative entity, how did it come about. You see that you know, multiple trophy coming there and say, okay, this is because there's a relationship that got converted. Okay, but again, just terminology. Now, I'm saying this ERD is incomplete. Why? This ERD is incomplete. Of course, it's incomplete because no primary keys are shown at all. Right? The, the key point I'm trying to say here is we have still have not specified the primary key for stock. We know that it's got an attribute called quantity. But let's talk about primary key for stock. Okay? So we spoke about this, that the lines are instances of the associative entity or stock. Okay, logic of cardinality markings, done. We've already spoken about this as well. Okay, and then we also spoke about this, about how when you convert it, it's always going to have crow feet, it's going to be solid lines coming from the associative entity. And the dashed lines or solid lines on the other side is determined by the original diagram. We've seen this as well. Okay, so let's do a little limbering up exercise before we jump on to talking about the primary key. Saying each film actor may star in one or more movies and each movie has one or more actors in it. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, it's both sides, one or more, one or more. Let's do this. So what are the entity types? Movie, actor, and uh, one or more, one or more. So what does that mean? Each movie has one or more actors. Each actor has one or more movies. Solid, solid. Right, solid line, and more crow foot on both sides. Okay, an actor can have many movies. A movie can have many actors. And this can, here we are saying that uh, you know both sides. The lower limit is one, so everything is solid. It need not be the case. You could say it could be lower limit zero, but in this case, that's what we deal. Okay. Now, let's think about this one aspect here. This is a many-to-many -many relationship. Right? And sort of almost as a reflex, we are going to convert it into, uh, we are going to create an associative entity and break out this many-to-many -many relationship. Okay? And the logic for doing that, why should we do that is because many-to-many -many relationships always tend to have interesting attributes. Okay? Many-to-many -many relationships always tend to have interesting attributes. Uh, so even if when you first draw the diagram, the attributes are not obvious, it's going to come up sometime in the future, so you better be prepared for it. Can you think of an attribute of the relationship here? Yeah. What is it? The role they played in it. Right? They may have been a supporting role, it may have been a villain's role or whatever. Any other attribute? Salary. The amount they were paid for that. See, none of these things is an attribute of just one or the other. Right? The amount that was paid was not just for the movie. You know, they paid uh, you know ten million dollars to Tom Cruise and twenty dollars to this other guy. Okay, so it's an attribute of the relationship. Okay, so that's what you're seeing here. So in most of the time when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, there will always be interesting attributes of the relationship. Interesting in the sense that significant, that the organization has to track. Okay, so that is why we're saying let's, you know, it, it's going to bark like a dog, let's make it an entity. That's what we're seeing here. Okay, so how would the new diagram look? It would still have movie. It would still have actor. And what, what might you want to call that associative entity? Role would be a nice name. Role would be a good name. That this actor played this role in this movie. Right? Of course, you could always cop out and say movie actor, but that's a last resort. We want to try and give it a meaningful name. 
right? Somebody looking at the diagram sees role. It talks so much than just some you know abstract kind of a name. So I want to call this role. Okay, and role could have attributes. All the attributes you know talked about how much they were paid, the salary for the role, or uh, you know the name of the role, the type of role, etc. We can think of several attributes now of role. But now we want to come to the cardinality markings here. Okay. Uh, now one part of the cardinality marking is really easy. Which part is that? The middle, right? You can put the crow feet and put solid lines. That's easy. So I'm going to do that. Crow feet, solid line, crow foot, solid line. This is always the case. Okay. Now the other two lines are going to be what? Solid. Because see, on top they're solid. It's just going to one half is coming here, the other half is coming here. It's going to be solid. Right? That is because the lower limit is one. Every movie must have at least one role. Right? Because we are saying every movie must have at least one actor. Right? So it's going to have. So this is going to be solid because the original was solid. This is it. Okay. Again, I emphasize you're not going to be drawing any entity relationship diagrams in this course. You're only going to be looking at diagrams that are already drawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. What if an actor is playing multiple roles in one movie? Yeah, so you know you have. So would you make it another many to many? Then would you have to have even? No, 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 no. Luke Skywalker in uh, Star Wars One is one role, and Luke Skywalker in Star Wars Two is another role. There will be separate roles. We'll see. This again, it's a really nice point that you brought up, uh, and which is, what if that again you also mentioned? What if the same actor is playing multiple roles <coughs> in the same movie? Okay, th this is beautiful because this is exactly going to the point that we are going to talk about. Okay, nice. We'll we'll address that. Okay, what might be a good name for the new entity? Well, we saw that. Role was a name that was suggested. Uh, that was a good name. Oh, I didn't know I had role here too. Okay, I thought it was something new that I had never thought of. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, still this diagram is incomplete because we have not talked about the primary key of role. Okay, so let's talk about now the attributes and the primary key of the associative. Of course, you know from the previous course, part of your question arises from the fact that you're assuming implicitly that the primary key of stock has to be warehouse ID product ID. Right? So that is why you're saying, what if the person plays multiple roles, what do I do? There are alternatives. We'll look at that now. Okay? So first of all, we already know quantity is an attribute of the primary uh, of the associative entity here. Stock. Right? And we can think of other uh, uh, attributes as well. Uh, now, can you think of any other attributes that really would automatically come into stock? Automatically, implicitly. It's a one to many relationship, right? So, obviously, warehouse ID is a part of stock and product ID is a part of stock. Now, that we don't even have to show it. Because it's a one-to-many relationship, and as we spoke about earlier, that is implicit, right? So stock already has three attributes, without us even talking about it, right? You get the point because it's got one-to-many relationships, and uh, you know from the one side the primary key is going to come into stock, right? We spoke about this, okay? Because every stock is off a warehouse, in a warehouse, and every stock is off a product. So warehouse ID, product ID are anyway there. Okay, that's that's an important point to note by virtue of the rule. Okay, so that's what we are talking about. Each stock must be at a warehouse and must refer to a specific product. Right? So the primary keys of warehouse and product need to be in stock. And by the way, that's already stuff that's going to happen implicitly. That's good. Okay. So now we have to talk about the primary key for stock. Okay, so here we are saying 
In this case, the primary key for stock could be composed of those two uh, attributes. We could say that the primary key for stock is warehouse ID plus product ID. Now, this suffices because you know there's going to be you know if you have let's say uh, you, there's no sense in saying warehouse two contains uh, two hundred units of keyboard. And then coming and saying warehouse 2 also contains 300 units of keyboard. You can say, well, it contains 500 units of keyboard. Right? So really, the key can be made up of warehouse ID and product ID. There's no problem. Okay? So that is one common option for uh, creating a primary key for the associative entity. Right? Whenever you have a many-to-many -many relationship, you create a new entity, and you make the primary key the combination of those two keys. Now that may not always work, as the examples you pointed out indicate. That may not always work. We'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, this we spoken about this. Whenever we have a many-to-many -many relationship, always create a new associative entity. And in the case of relationships of degree higher than two, namely, can you name one relationship whose degree is more than two? Ternary relationship. We spoke about that, right? Ternary relationship. So even in the case of ternary relationships and more, you're always going to create an associative entity. Right? So you'll never see ternary relations. In fact, there's no notation for ternary relationships at all in our uh, course. 